Good morning. It is Monday, the 18th of May, and this morning's devotional is based on 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And I've titled it, Learning to Look on the Inside. So I decided to prepare just a little bit differently for today's video devotional, or actually to prepare a little less. Uh, I decided not to shave. If you look close, you can see I've got about one day's stubbles starting to show. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on my hair. I wore a t-shirt. You can see by looking kind of closely at my eyes, allergies have not been real kind to me this year. It's springtime, but anyway. So why did I choose to appear this way instead of usually dressed and shaven and all? Done up pretty nice. Just an illustration that outward appearances don't always tell the whole story. Um, people who don't know me probably won't be very impressed if they see this video and click on it and want to listen to what I have to say. They'll see some older gray-haired guy unshaven. Uh, looks like he probably needs a better night's sleep. Uh, I look kind of like I got up in the morning, but really not very many of us are very impressive when we get up in the morning anyway, are we? But for people who know me as a person, to the ones who know me on the inside, they know that one day's growth doesn't make me different than I was yesterday. I'm still the same me. I'm just an unshaven guy today, that's all. You know, years ago, my mom always taught us that we needed to be dressed up right when we went to church in the morning. And we were. We had our Sunday clothes that we called them. And Saturday night, we would spend time getting everything clean and ironed and straightened out and the shoes shined and ready to go on Sunday morning. I went to Catholic schools through most of my early education. And as I got into high school, one of the requirements were, was a white shirt and tie every day. So I learned how to get all dressed up that way. I spent time in the army and I've got my I mean, old army fatigue t-shirt. This isn't the real one from the army. That one's long gone. This is just uh, one I bought online. Uh, drill sergeant expected us to be dressed right, correctly every morning as we get out there um, or else. <laughs> uh, but here's our passage for this morning. And it is over the choice of David as king. Saul has not followed the Lord, and God's going to replace him. Samuel has been sent to find God's choice and anoint him, David, to be king. And Jesse, the father, had has, has had all his sons come and stand in front of Samuel, and Samuel looked at each one of them and thought, Gosh, that's a tall, strapping, handsome young guy. He's probably the one God's chosen as king. And each one goes by and God says, no, it's not the one. No, it's not the one. And finally, David stands before Samuel and God says, this is him. The seventh verse says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as men see. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God exposed the very common human tendency and inadequacy in this passage. Humans overwhelmingly judge people based on their outward appearance. Granted, that's really about all that we have to start with, but the tendency is that we start with that and we stay with that. In other words, we let that first impression lead us to a stronger initial judgment than we should. And we need to take time to get to know people better on the inside. So, question. Does a bright white smile with straight teeth and big bushy brown hair and a flat belly make a better person? The prophet Samuel was learning outward appearances don't necessarily make the man. 
David's brothers, who had been first to stand in front of Samuel, were not chosen. I'm sure in Samuel's eyes, several of them could have fit the bill pretty well, but God spoke to him and said, not this one, not this one, not this one. Samuel finally has to ask, is this it? And Jesse, the father says, oh, there's just one more. It's the young one, but he's out in the field tending sheep, that's all. Samuel says, go get him because he's the one. God tells Samuel that he's now found a man after his heart. The most important responsibility we Christians have is to keep our hearts right before God. Paul says in 1 Timothy 4, verse 8, physical exercise profits just a little. It's good for us. But what's better for us is spiritual discipline. There's nothing wrong with looking clean and neat. I know most moms growing up memorize the book of Second Opinions, chapter 4, verse 1, that says cleanliness is next to godliness. I'll let you find that verse. But the real test is how we look in God's sight. No matter how together on the outside we may look, if our heart's not right before God, then we're not ready to be used to accomplish his will. So, are you taking care of your heart? If it's become spiritually out of shape, then take some time to get it back in shape. How do you do that? Spend time reading your Bible, spend time in prayer, spend time in reflection. How is my life doing? Ask the Lord. And make sure when God looks at your heart that he's pleased with what he sees in the inside. It's the internal not the external that affects the eternal. I think that was from Good News Publishing. So here's a, a couple of questions that can help us as we look at our heart. One, just ask yourself, how important are person's looks to me? How do they affect me? Are they more important than spending time and sitting down and getting to know the real person, the real them inside? Number two, during a week, let's say, how, much, how many of your activities reflect the importance of spiritual things in your life? In other words, can you look back at a week and say, I've spent time on the inside of me? And third, let me give you some passages that you can look at and then do some meditation on Look at Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4. Look at 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verses 22 and 23. And read Psalm 5. Read Psalm 5 prayerfully. David talks about in the morning, he lifted up his soul to the Lord. And that's usually a good time to start. Not all of us are morning people. I'm not. I wish I were wired that way. But I do make the first part of my morning, whenever it happens, time to get into the Bible. That's really first. I'll have some, uh, either a cup of coffee or I'll fill up a bottle of water and have that. And I open up my Bible. It's the first thing I'll read. And then I'll open up emails, look at devotionals. And so I'll spend time with God that way. And then I'll check up on the news and see what's happening because it's important to know. But first of all, it's what's happening inside my life with God through spiritual disciplines. Make that a part of your priority and you'll see that you'll grow in a way that's pleasing to the Lord when he looks at your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us for what you see just as human beings made in your image. Help us grow on the inside to become more like Christ, I pray in his name. Amen. As always, we're staying in his grip. God bless.